Let's unchain skid with you again for some unchain your mind. In this case, we're going to give you a little bit of information that came out of Daniel Kahneman's book called Thinking Fast and Slow. This is on the subject of cognitive biases. I'll put these links in the low bar uh, for the book and not only that, but a uh, cognitive bias codex that John Manoogian did that uh, I helped out with to give some definitions to so you can see just how crazy the mind is. In order to give you a little bit of background here, a cognitive bias is something that changes the way you think about something. You see it the wrong way. A better, uh, an easy way of thinking about this is an optical illusion. And I'll put a little thing on the screen here that shows how two lines can look different depending on, uh, on how you draw them. The only way to tell that the lines are exactly the same length is to know that you're seeing them in the incorrect way. Cognitive biases are the same way. If you can be aware of what these cognitive biases are, then you can correct for the way you're thinking about something. And this is very, very important because accurate analysis for a problem or for a situation is what you're going to need, what you're going to need to be able to get through it properly and uh, successfully. This isn't a complete review of the book. This is just some snippets that I took out of it that I made notes on to personally use kind of every day as I'm going through uh, life and problems come up just to focus on these kind of things. Now, the entire book is full of good information, but just for a short video, let's take a look at a few things. Okay, the first thing to consider is something called the focusing illusion. Focusing illusion is that whatever is concerning or bugging you right now, you think it's very, very important. The fact of the matter is that the real way of looking at it, the, the, the real, the reality of the situation is, is not as important as that. But because it's what you're thinking about right now, you put a lot of emphasis on it. You can see this with people being very, very concerned about what's happening right now, and it's not. So it's important as you're sitting there focusing and going over and over something that's bugging you to go, okay, let's put this into the bigger context. How important is this going to be next year? How important is it even going to be tomorrow? Okay, so whatever is really, really bugging you right now, it shouldn't be bugging you that much. You're, it's only because of the focusing illusion that you think it's more important than it really is. Okay, second thing to be aware of is uh, self-centeredness. And of course, we're all self-centered and of course that can apply to a bunch of things. But what I mean in this context, uh, evaluating other people's actions that affect you negatively or positively. Okay, somebody could, so what am I saying? Somebody does something and uh, it affects you. And it's like, oh, I can't believe they did that to me. Chances are they're not doing that to you. Chances are they're doing it for their own self-interest in some way, shape, or form, and that you really didn't make any difference in that calculus whatsoever. So it's rare that somebody does something because of the effect on you. Now, there could be a negative effect on you. It could screw you over. Or maybe somebody does something nice for you sometimes. But generally, uh, people do things for their own reasons. And it's you thinking about your own self-centeredness that makes it look like something is about you. It's more than likely not. So keep that in mind. All right. Uh, third thing. Uh, bad impressions and bad stereotypes are quicker to form and more resistant to disconfirmation than good ones. So what that means is that the long-term success of a relationship or job or any kind of uh, thing where uh, two people or more have to relate uh, depends far more on avoiding the negative than on seeking the positive. So what that means is that um, if you want to have some kind of stable relationship, either with a person or with your job or a situation or whatever, uh, the good interactions have to outnumber the bad ones at least five to one because we are very focused on the bad, okay? That's, that's part of our, evol of our uh, evolutionary psychology. So what happens is if there, is, there could be one to one uh, you know, a good uh, interaction, a bad interaction. Yeah, it won't work. You, you will find that horrendous to deal with. The only way to actually have a stable relationship is the bad interactions have to be very, very small. Less than one out of five, or it's not going to work. If you're unhappy at work, if you're unhappy in a relationship, 
you know, if you just take a look at these things, that is probably why. And I'm not saying stay someplace where you the bad interactions are more than one to five. No, I'm saying that's actually a benchmark for why you're feeling that way and why it needs to make a change. Uh, fourth thing we should talk about, decision weight. Uh, decision weight is the probability that your mind assigns to the event by weighing in psychological effects. Okay, what does that really mean? What, what it means is that let's say you have a certain probability of something happening. There's two biases that work on either end of, uh, of the spectrum. Uh, there is the possibility effect at the low end. And that means that something that has a very low probability of happening the possibility effect cognitive bias makes you think that it's more likely. So you could have a very, very small chance of an airplane accident or something like that, but your mind goes, oh, I'm worried about this because this could happen. And people will make decisions and spend money to reduce probabilities far lower than they need to be because they think even though it's 1%, they perceive it more like 5%, or at least act in that way. The same thing happens on the other end with something called the certainty effect in that um, something that is very highly probable, you will uh, psychologically think is not as probable. So let's say you have a 99% success rate on something, uh, but you worry, you say, oh, well, maybe it won't actually work. And you're thinking it's more like 90%. And so what people will do is they'll spend an enormous amount of money or they'll make decisions in order to make that probability even higher and higher and higher. So that's the certainty effect making you think that even though something is already very probable, it's not as probable at the high end. So be careful of decision weight because decision weight is your psychological bias put on top of what's the actual probability of something happening, both on the low and the high end. Okay, fifth thing to keep in mind is anchoring. This is the tendency to bias your estimate of something towards the very first piece of data. So you could go to the store and buy a lottery ticket and you won $20 or something, just a small prize. Your mind is gonna go, well, I'm very much predisposed to buying more of those because look, it came together for me. You are gonna anchor on the fact that that actually worked. So even though the chances of that happening again are very, very low, you have to be aware of the fact that you are going to anchor on the very first piece of data that comes your way. Now, this, this is, is kind the... of related to the sixth one that I wanted to bring up, and that's called for, uh, what you see is all there is. This is trying to solve a difficult problem by substituting a simpler problem that you know about. In other words, your mind is trying to come up with a solution, but it doesn't understand the complexities of the problem that it has. So it brings in another problem as a substitute, which you can solve. Uh, and you think that you're solving the problem because your mind likes to convince you that you're doing a good job, but you're not. And so you have to be careful of this. A good example of this would be something's the matter with your car. Uh, the engine's not running quite right. Something doesn't seem right. There's a whole lot of diagnostics that should go into that to find out exactly what's wrong so it can be corrected. But you're just a simple dude. You're not really sure. So you say, well, maybe it needs an oil change. Now, that's not a bad idea to keep up with your oil changes, but an oil change is something you know how to do. So you go and change the oil thinking that that's going to solve the problem. Now, I'm not saying it's going to hurt, but uh, just substituting a simple problem like changing the oil for a bigger problem, there's something the matter with the engine, is not an accurate way to proceed, okay? You should be confronting the diagnostics of what's actually wrong with the engine and probably getting a professional to look at it because that's what's going to actually make the difference, not the simple problem. So beware of the tendency to try and make things simple by putting in a simple problem that you know how to deal with and thinking that's going to solve the bigger problem, the more complex problem, it's not. Okay, that's a very, very quick look at six different cognitive biases that uh, can affect you day to day. Again, this came from the work of Daniel Kahneman in Thinking Fast and Slow. I can't recommend that book enough so that you understand your own mind and the mistakes you make on a continual basis just as a result of the fact that we all have these cognitive biases and it would be a very good idea to try and compensate for them to achieve better results. 
Hope you have a great day out there and talk to you soon.